Hey there, John with Owl Vans. In this video, I'm gonna take you through the installation of our ladder tire carrier. It's not all that different from our standard tire carrier, so we're actually gonna cover a lot of the same stuff. Uh, let's get started. First thing you wanna do, this van, obviously it's already set up on this van, but when you get your ladder tire carrier, you're gonna to wanna to start inside the door. You've got this interior trim panel. We have a trim panel removal tool. It's like an orange plastic tool. You just wanna kinda of slide that in the side and then you can pull this panel off. It's just got snaps. We actually include an extra snap in the back uh, in case you break one of those. Once you get this panel off, then what we're gonna do is work on installing the plate that holds the ladder in place. Uh, I've covered that as well before. Is that to remove this panel, I've actually already removed this one, but it's really, really simple. You just work this tool in behind and then you can kind of peek in there and you, you, you kind of lever it and pop it off. You have all these little snaps. Those are the things you need to pop off. It's really quite simple. Occasionally, unless you go slow, you can break a little snap. They're super cheap. You can pick up more from an uh, automotive store, Mercedes-Benz, etc. So I've removed that panel already so you don't have to sit through it. Okay, so you've got the panel removed. You're going to go inside the door. What we're going to be doing is actually removing this magnetic mount because we're going to use that hole in the door to mount the rack. So it's a 13 millimeter. Comes off pretty easily. I've already got a plate installed on this van. This is an unpainted plate. You always get nicer stuff than I have. Uh, this is a powder coated plate. This is what yours is going to look like. Now, You've got three holes here. That's because this plate is, is ambidextrous. It can be used on either, either door. So you're really only gonna use the bottom two holes. We include some sheet metal screws. Those sheet metal screws are for um, kind of ease uh, pilot holes for setting these kind of bigger bolts that you can put in. First, you've got this hole it's gotta line up with. I like to stick one of the bolts through there just to make sure it stays lined up. Once you get that through, then you can put the two pilot uh, sheet metal screws through the door and then you can actually back those sheet metal screws, take the whole thing off, and you're gonna to wanna to probably drill out, I use like a step bit, drill out to widen those holes slightly. So we designed this part that kinda of looks like an upside down hockey stick. Why do we design it like this? Well, there's really little clearance in there to get your hands, you can't really get behind and hold a nut on, and so the way this is gonna work, let's try to pretend we're doing this virtually, is this plate sets in there, so you've got a piece of door sheet metal on the back side of this plate. Then you're gonna take this, come in the top, and lever it behind, and then you're gonna use your hand to hold this up, or you can reach behind and just kinda of hold it against the plate and put the screws through and then find those nuts that are welded on the back of this. You wanna tighten that down. As you tighten one, the other one's gonna loosen a little bit, so you tighten them both down pretty tight, and then you're gonna to wanna to put the sway link through here, and you're gonna to wanna to tighten that nylock super, super tight because you don't want that to move on the door. One little hint, when you are tightening that sway link is to reach on the other side and either have someone hold or get a, a wrench or something and hold that sway link flat so that as you really tighten that, you're not actually twisting that sway link and then you close the door and realize that your sway link isn't flat. All right, now it's time to install the hinges that it, are these that kind of look like C's, I guess depending on how you look at them. Uh, they got holes in the back. Now there should be four bolts that you get with this. Four of them look the same and one of, or sorry, three of them look the same and one of them looks like this. Normally we'll kind of color the top of this bolt, but you see how it's kind of narrower? That is because this bottom hole here, uh, you need a narrower bolt, it's just that simple. So you wanna go ahead and take these bolts and stick them, stick them, that bottom one sets in there like that. And then you... When you install these bolts, you wanna make sure that this bolt is moved all the way kind of towards the side of the vehicle. That's because there's a little catch in there that um, can impact the top of the bolt. So once it's over here, you'll see that it's loose. That's good, same here. So now we have these plastic, you see these? little plastic uh, washers. You slide those on the outside of the bolt. And on top of that. And then you can just go ahead and put the nuts on, tighten them down. There should be lock washers as well. You wanna tighten those uh, kind of snug, but not crank on them, because we'll actually tighten them all the way down later. You'll receive two hinges that look like this. 
These are really easy. It goes small hinge on top, long hinge on bottom. The way these attach to the carrier. So the way this goes, this hinge comes in, goes inside the bracket, and then this bolt comes in from the back side and screws in. You wanna put these on before you mount your rack. These you can tighten fairly tight. This is gonna be what secures your rack to your hinges. So you wanna make sure that these are, you know, 50 plus foot pounds uh, and nice and tight. Once you've got the hinges installed on the van, the C hinges, and once you've gotten the hinges installed on your rack, it's time to put the rack on the van. It's pretty simple. You've got um, a small uh, plastic package that have two bolts in it. Those bolts have um, two steel washers and two plastic washers. It goes, everything goes inside of this C channel. Everything goes inside of the C channel. So you've got this that's already on your rack. You've got a plastic washer goes in one side, a plastic washer goes in the other side, and then you sandwich them with the metal washer. It's a little hard to show right now, but then everything goes on like this. Ah. It's a little bit fiddly to get it right, but once you get it, Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So it goes outside hinge, you've got a metal washer, the plastic washer, the main hinge that goes to the bracket. And on the bottom, you're gonna put this nylock nut. Now, once you put the nylock nut on, you see there's a little bit of up down play. Sometimes they're a little snugger. You're gonna wanna tighten this down so there's no play. So this hinge is gonna squish down a little bit onto those washers. You don't want it to be cranked down so it's, so it's really tight to move this, but you wanna make it tight enough so that you don't have up and down play. It kind of helps because it's a little bit fiddly to have two people, even though this is quite light, it's nice to have someone help hold it while you get those installed. Once you get those tightened down, it's time to thread your sway link through the door. The sway link is upside down on this setup. We've designed it that way on purpose. Um, you're gonna wanna thread that through the door and use that nylock nut on the backside. Make sure that's nice and tight. You don't want that to come loose and this platform should be level. Assuming you've got your hinges and your inner door plate all set up, what's different about the ladder tire here? First of all, you've got this bottom hoop. How does the bottom hoop install? The bottom hoop is actually steel. And the reason we do this is we wanted to bolt that onto the carrier um, as kind of a redundant way to make sure the tire always stays on your vehicle. It's got some threaded holes in there, you can see. And you'll also find two of these stainless steel bolts with washers on them and these thread right into that. So what you're gonna wanna do is actually thread the bolt all the way from the back through the bottom of the hoop. It's pretty self-explanatory, thread that in. You're gonna wanna make sure that's very tight. Oh, don't forget this either. This has a top and a bottom. We kind of mark the bottom with a little divot and it also has sometimes, how it'll have like a serial number punched into it. Uh, that divot is the bottom. So it goes this side up. That's gonna help make sure everything's nice and tight. Once you install that bottom hoop, it should be nice and tight. There should be no wobble to it. It should fit right up against the contour of that bottom tube and be nice and tight. That's gonna hold your tire on. You wanna make sure you get that tight. Video to talk a little bit about sway links and adjustability. Now I've got a ladder tire carrier in front of me right here uh, on just a demo door. But uh, this also is true of Sherpas and other uh, NCV3 products that have these hinges that bolt onto the aluminum carrier. Now, the situation I wanna talk about today, and I'll rotate this a little bit, is the sway link not being flat. So if I can keep this from rolling away. Uh, what we're talking about is see how this has a sway link that is not flat. Now what you wanna do is get that sway link flat because then everything's gonna operate, operate properly. Now on these, what we call, we call this a flap hinge and we call this a C hinge that bolts to your van. There's some adjustability on the back here. I don't know if you can see, but there are slots in this that allow the, the ladder tire to move up and down. So if you're getting a situation where your sway link isn't flat, whether it's on a Sherpa or a ladder tire, here's what you wanna do. I'm gonna put you back on this tripod. Okay. So you wanna loosen up first and foremost these bolts behind the, where you bolted the flap hinge to the ladder. You can loosen these up. 
There's two on top, two on the bottom. You need to loosen all four at once. Don't take them out, just loosen them. And the same may be true of these bolts that bolt the C-hinge to the van. Uh, you may have to loosen those up if you can't get the adjustability that you desire. So what I typically will do is grab a wrench. Let's assume this is the right size. It's not the right size, but you grab a wrench. And then what you want to do is you want to actually lift up, loosen all those bolts and lift up on everything. And here's where you may need to loosen these C-hinges to get everything high enough. And you want to just look at that sway link. Okay, now the sway link is flat. Now you want to get in here with your wrench, tighten one of these down, tight enough that it holds everything in place. And then uh, you, should, you can let go and it shouldn't um, sag if you've gotten that tight enough. You might want to grab two people, but it should work with one as well. Same thing as I mentioned with the Sherpa, you may have to loosen up these bolts here. You may have to loosen up these uh, nuts on these bolts here to get a little bit of adjustability out of this. And then again, loosening up these and you do, you loosen all of them, move the ladder up and then uh, snug things down with the ladder at the right height. Uh, and then you should have everything operating properly. We didn't have that adjustability in the carriers early on, so it hadn't been an issue. Um, now we've built in some adjustability to make sure that you can get that swaling perfectly flat, but you do now have to adjust it. Other things you're gonna need to install, these foot pegs, when you get your rack, you'll just see a threaded uh, stud sticking off of the rack. These just screw on, you can make them nice and tight. This right here is the all thread that is going to hold your tire. When you get the all thread, this is your tire, I guess washer would be the right term for it, and this is your handle. These hold the tire in place. Why do we do it this way? The reason we do it this way is because it allows you to have different size tires, different size wheels, and move this spindle up and down as needed. What you're going to do is when you get this, that uh, back nut is welded on, you're going to want to have one washer behind, thread it from the back of the rack forward, and then you're going to want to have, um, this is actually backwards on this, but you want to have a washer against that uh, aluminum channel, and then you want to have a lock washer, and then you want to have a nut. Once that's all installed, Tighten that down nice and tight. That's gonna basically be uh, what your handle goes on to. I'm gonna throw a tire on here and show you what height you want that at. So you wanna adjust that spindle so that it's coming out of the center of your wheel. Some wheels will have a little plastic cap in the center. You can just pop that out. You don't even really need to keep it because if you do get a flat, you can use one of the plastic caps off of the flat tire. This spindle again coming out of the center of the wheel and the way this setup works is you want to get the bottom of the tire all the way against the bottom and then rock the tire back so it's nice and snug against the back of the ladder. The cone, the narrow part of the cone goes into the center hub of the wheel and then you've got your handle. It's really quite simple. You just start to spin your handle on. And at a certain point, you'll start to get some tension. You wanna make this tight, but you don't wanna make it so tight that you can't get it off if you need the spare. So you wanna make sure it's snug. That's pretty snug. You see there's no wobble in the tire. It's not bouncing around on the rack. And then there's also a little hole in the front of that all thread. I'll show you this way. It's also a little hole in the front of that all thread you can put a padlock through. So right here if you want to secure your wheel on you can put the padlock through. Overall the tire carrier should be fairly simple to install. If you have any problems you can always reach out to us. We're happy to help. Uh, our phone number and our email is on our website under the contact us page. Um, I think I've covered everything. Thanks so much.